Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 758. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 756 758, click on the link directly below the video. Hey, in this video, uh, we're going to extract some data based on two criteria. Here's the situation security, business. Our criteria is please. Uh, anytime you see security A or B, we need to extract the business name. So we need this one, this one, this one, this one, not this one, not this one, and this one. Now this actually, uh, this comes from a post, Mr. Excel message board. There's the link. Aladdin and Peter SSS uh, posted some great solutions with lots of cool tricks. And so we're going to do um, three different versions of this. Now this is extracting data. I've done lots of videos on extracting data where we do, you know, if rows index small function, it's array. Uh, I've done uh, videos with the aggregate function if you have 2010. But this um, video here specifically is going to show three different me methods that do not require control shift enter and don't require function like rows and a few other functions. This post, uh, someone posted it who said they're using Excelsius, a program which I've never used, but there was a bunch of limitations and so these formulas fit those limitations using regular Excel functions and there were some cool tricks. All right, so ultimately we need to just extract these and put these over here. Now first, uh, this first one is a bunch of Aladdin's uh, tricks. Um, we want to put w a number here for every time we see A, B, or A, B, any, anything criteria here. So we really want 1, 2, 3, 4, nothing, nothing, and then 5. Right? So the trick is, how do you get sequential numbers that then skip like this? Well, first we need a trigger. We need to say, in this column, many times it sees an A or a B. Match function can do that. You can say match, and it's a lookup function. I'm going to look up this value here, comma, and I'm going to lose this right here. The green will pop. Oh, no. So then I'm going to highlight that. Please look up that within that range right there. A, B are the only two uh, values in that lookup array. I'm going to hit the F4, and then comma, 0 for exact match. Now that'll give me a number or an NA. The number is the ordinal position of the item in the list. But we're not really interested in the ordinal position or the relative position. We're just interested in that it's a, a number. These NAs we want, we're not interested in. So I'm just going to say, is this a number? Is number is a function that just says, if it's a number, it says true. If it's anything else, it says false. So I just wrap that around there, double click, and I send it down. Well. That's the trigger for us to know that, yes, there's something in this row that matches the criteria over here. But really, remember, we want 1, 2, 3, 4, blank, blank, and a 5. So we're going to use a little trick here. We're going to use this as the trigger inside of an if, and we're going to have to use a fancy little formula to put those numbers in there. So I'm going to say if, there's the logical test. I'm going to come to the end here, comma, and I'm going to use the lookup function. Now this is going to be pretty tricky here. We're actually going to put in some really big number here so that this uh, lookup function always finds the last number in the list. So it could be any big number. The biggest number that Excel knows is 9 point and then 14 other 9's because Excel can see 15 significant conditions. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. E plus 307, that's scientific notation. Now, you could put any big number there. Uh, this is the biggest number that Excel knows. So if you put it in, there will never be a problem when you're trying to find the last number in a list. All right, now, the, tr the, uh, the second trick here besides the big number is lookup. Well, I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to do a colon. Now C1 to C1, I'm going to close parentheses on that. I'm going to click here and hit F4 to lock that. Now this is an expandable range. As we go down, the range will expand. And also, it's only looking at the cells above. Well, right now, what is it? the biggest number in this is 0, right? If we add 1 to it right here, that lookup, then it's going to look at all the all the numbers above, find the last one, and add 1. All right. So that's the value if true. And this, in essence, is a part of the main trick that will allow us to get a, a blank there, a blank here. And then when it gets down to this true, this lookup will look up the last number, which will be 4 right there, and then add 1. All right. So comma, 
That was the value of true, the value of false. Well, please show me double quote, double quote, which is blank. Close parentheses. Just enter. I control enter to keep the cell a highlight, and then double click and send it down. Ah, oh, that is just beautiful. Blank, blank, and a five. Now we can come over here, and actually we're going to have to use this lookup a few different times here. It's, I copied and escaped. Put this into edit mode, equal sign, control V. Now, what am I going to look up here? That's just a, the big number, right? But um, there's our lookup value, and our lookup vector will just be this. And we'll just find the last number, which will be our 5. OK, now, extracting. Um, we need to actually have a formula here that extends down and turns off and shows a blank when it gets past the fifth one. Well, watch this, equals if, and we're going to use count, uh, count, uh, counts non-empty cells, and we're going to have an expandable range. So I'm going to click there, colon, close parentheses, and then I'm going to click right there in F4 to lock it going down. Right now, that's not empty. It'll give me one. When it's down here, the, the second one down here, it'll find something here and here which will be 2. So that's our counter as we go down. And then I'm going to say whenever that is greater than 5, that's our count. And I'm going to hit F4 to lock it, row reference going down. Whenever it's greater than 5, comma, I want to show a double quote for blank. Otherwise, and we'll use lookup again. Look up. Now, the lookup value here, I'm going to actually do that same counter trick because it'll work perfectly. One, two, three, as there's stuff there, it will count and give us our lookup value because guess what? That'll be the vector that we match our numbers with, and then we'll tell lookup to go over to the second column and to find the value to extract. So the lookup value would be counter. Lookup vector, that's the vector which it needs to match that lookup value. I'm going to go all the way down, F4 to lock it, comma, and the lookup, the result vector, which is the item we're looking up, is right there. Notice lookup can do that. It has a lookup value and two distinct a lookup vector and a result vector, different than, say, VLOOKUP. Close parentheses on that. That is the value of false. Close parentheses on that. Control Enter. Oops, drag it down. That is just beautiful. One, two, three, four, and seven. One, two, three, four, and seven. Okay, let's look at a variation on that one. Instead of doing the is number match, we can simply say if and use the or function. I can just say, hey, or takes logical tests. I'm going to say, is that one equal to this one? And I'm going to lock this one, F4, F4, comma. Or the second logical test, is that one equal to, and I can't quite get on that. Sorry. Oh, there it is, security B, and I have to lock that one going down. Or is just can take as many logical tests as you want. As long as one of them are, is true, or will deliver a true. When or gets down here to C and D, it's going to say, these aren't one of these. So you get two falses, and or will deliver a false. But as long as there's an A or a B here, it'll deliver a true. Comma, if that's true, and then we'll do our same lookup. I'm going to Control V. No, I didn't, I didn't save it. Lookup, and then 9.12345678910112314. Plus 307. You can use any big number you want. The theory behind using 9, this one here, is it'll work in all situations uh, because it is the biggest number that Excel can handle. Okay, that is our lookup value. The lookup vector is going to be our expandable range, colon, close parentheses. I'm going to click right there and F4 to lock it. And then we need to Right now, it will give us 0, right? But what do we want here? We want 1, so we add 1. Close parentheses on the lookup. Whoops. That, that was incorrect. That's the value if true, comma, the value if false, double quote. Close parentheses. All right, so this is an alternative. 
That's alternative number one. Alternative number two is, well, shoot, we just have a column of numbers. Can't we just use the max? Whoops. Equals max of all of those. And it'll get that five. And then this formula right here will be the same, that, uh, that beautiful little counter, comparing it to that five. Uh, give me a blank if it's greater than that. Otherwise, do that lookup with lookup uh, vector and look up result vector. All right, so those two, this is a variations on the lad. Now, here's Peter uh, SSS's, just totally cool. All right, so we have the situation here. We have our criteria. Well, guess what? You can go like this. You could use the count if. Now, watch this. The range uh, we want as our list of values is this right here. Right? So there's two possibilities. And I'm going to hit F4 to lock it uh, going down, comma, and this is the criteria. Now, this is kind of a silly formula, because guess what? As we copy down, we can only get one, but no problem. What will we do? It's just a clever way of matching two criteria. Anytime it matches, it's going to get a 1. And then we'll say plus this. Well, so that'll give us a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4. But oops, when it gets down here, it'll have a list of 4 again, and then a 4 again. So there'll be some duplicates, where above, we had blanks. But check this out. That'll work out fine for us. We have a whole column of numbers. And we could extend it down further. We'd have to add another part that says, if something's blank, then show blank. But we're just doing this list here. The duplicate's the only difference. Up above, we had blanks. I'm going to go max here. So we got our 5. And our extract range, why don't we just put type some numbers in 1 to 8, right? And we'll say, I better scroll down a little bit. Let me scrunch this up to not bunch this formula up so much. If this number sitting right to my left relative cell reference is greater than this, F4 to lock it going down, then I want a uh, value of true is a double quote. Otherwise, we can just use an index now, because we, we can use match function to match a number here. And match is so cool, because when it gets down to 4, we can say, hey, match, do an exact match. And it only finds the first one. It ignores the duplicates. All right, so we're going to use index and match as our lookup. Index, the array, the thing we're trying to return is that. And so I'm going to hit F4. Lock it only going down there, comma. The row number, we just use match here. And what, what's match going to look up? The lookup value is one cell to my left, the 1, the 2, the 3, the 4, the 5, etc. Comma. The uh, lookup array, well, it's looking for this number right here, F4, to lock it going down. And then comma 0. 0 is what allows us. If we don't put a 0, it will find the last one. Close parentheses. That will give us the row number. Close parentheses. That's our index. That's the value of false. Close parentheses. Control Enter. And then double click and send it down. And sure enough, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7. All right, so that's a count if uh, with some criteria max and your uh, kind of normal if index match. Um, whoops. Little variation on that awesome Aladdin formula with or there. And then this uh, amazing uh, formula here, series of formulas all to look up and extract values without doing array or um, without um, functions that Excelsius, the program, which I've never used. I probably should. Uh, though that program doesn't use these functions, these formulas will work. And you know, if that weren't enough, three methods. At the bottom here, I have method one, two, three. Those are the ones we did in the video. Down at the bottom, if you download it, I have uh, method four, uh, which is the array. There's a count if method, and here's your typical uh, uh, array formula using small 
And then still down here for comparison purposes, uh, here's a method that works only in 2010 using the aggregate function. Those are the, this aggregate and the one with this index small, the kind of extract formulas I usually uh, do videos on. But this video, if you download this workbook, um, this is uh, 758. There's uh, five different ways to accomplish the same things, five different formulas. All right, see you next trick.